job. You told them exactly what they need to hear. And you ought to come back. Greetings, everyone. I am that I am. I am Lauren Parker. And um, I'm here today because the winter is over with. We're no longer going to have winter. Yes. Um, so we have reparations that keeps on coming, you know, to the forefront. Us so-called African American, so-called black, we're indigenous to this land. And I was here at the, the last city council meeting, and I just want to, first of all, say when they told Whippy Goldberg to um, reflect on her history, that we are original to all parts of this land. So the Jews that they talk about is us. So. When they say Jewish, there's a difference between being a Jew and being Jewish. And Kanye was right when he said, we are Jews. So yes, the indigenous to this land, we're indigenous to all parts of the globe. And um, let me say this here. So the land was stolen from Khalifia and her Amazon tribes were forced off their lands and scattered throughout California and the United States. And that was never supposed, uh, we were never supposed to be separated. We didn't have separate states, right? And so through numerous illegal governors and city council treaty acts, we discovered that land was stolen from Empress Khalifa, and it is the people's obligation to publicly reclaim their land for redevelopment. No governors or city council members have the right or authority to deny any indigenous person of land bid opportunities. To deny the people of immediate housing or business development is an abomination and must be addressed immediately. Due to the level of ongoing corruption, the only solution is for certain government funded properties to be confiscated by the people for the people. According to the indigenous population historical archive records regarding the US commissioner's testimony of the 1830 Treaty Act of Rabbit Creek, 640 acres is to each adult and monthly land tax payments must be rendered. So I'm just here today putting you on notice that come January 1st, 2023, we are going to be, we the people are changing the locks. Yes, because most of these um, government funded buildings do not belong to who has Parker, them. Ms. Parker, thank you very much for your comments. However, your time has expired. Our next speaker is Nguiz White. Buju uh, Ani. Nguess Indigenous Cause, uh, Chicago and Dujabar. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Nguess White. I'm an Ojibwe member of the Wapo Island, Island uh, in Canada, and I'm also Navajo from Fort Defiance, Arizona. Um, I was just asked to speak on behalf of the Indigenous community of Chicago, so I was like, yeah, why not give it a shot? You know, I'm an educator. Um, I'm like what you call to be like a bridge builder. I'm also an encourager, basketball coach goofball, whole nine yards, work with my kids. <clears throat> and uh, I was always taught you can uh, catch more bees with honey. So I was like, I'll apply that to my life, you know. So um, I would like to encourage you guys to learn about indigenous people in your area. I just did a talk at the Winneka School, and I think it's the North, Day Sh North Shore Day School, country school, something like that, in Winneka. And man, was I educated. But also, not only did I get to do education, the kids were like sharing their culture with me and all that. So I know I have only a couple minutes. I don't want to do a big old spiel, but there are, like they were saying, indigenous people in this area. And I definitely encourage you guys to come to, we have multiple agencies. So we have like Indian Health Services, we got religious services, we got everything. So if you have any indigenous people that you know personally or that like, students in schools, I would definitely encourage you to send them our way. Um, it's really important to 
bring back our um, cultural awareness, revitalize our languages, our traditional teachings, our traditional knowledge. And as an indigenous person, that was instrumental to me and my growth as a person. So I would love to share those type of teachings with people, like I have friends who are indigenous, but don't know their roots and their culture. So I would definitely love to, for you guys to just to send them our way so we can help not only educate them, but also the main public. So thank you guys, appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. White, for your comments. Your Honor, there are no further speakers who have timely signed up for the public comment period. All right, that concludes our public comment period. Next up, resolutions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have one resolution today, a resolution commemorating Native American Heritage Month. The chair recognizes Alderman Mitchell. Madam President, I move for the temporary suspension of the rules for the immediate, con immediate consideration of this resolution. Hearing no objection, so order. <clears throat> <clears throat> Let me uh, <clears throat> identify some of our guests in the box. We have Dr. Doreen Wise, Mary Smith, Melody Cerna, Dave Spencer, Jasmine Gurno, Cindy Starr, I think Mr. White will be joining us, Steve Patterson, Shelley uh, Tukunari, Alan Abrams, Mavis Nakonish, and Commissioner Matt Boday. Are there any members of the body that wish to speak to uh, this resolution? The chair recognizes Alderwoman Hatton. Thank you, Madam President. I never get to be first. I caught you guys sleeping. Um, um, I stand to be uh, associated with this resolution and um, I'm excited to have been learning more myself in this role over the last several years about our indigenous communities in the Chicago area. Was very honored for the second year in a row um, to be able to be part of our Indigenous Peoples Day celebration at Potawatomi Park in the 49th Ward. Um, I'm honored to be a co-sponsor and working along Alderwoman Rosanna Rodriguez Sanchez and many others in making Indigenous Peoples Day a holiday here in our city so that we can correct and move forward and have a, a strong marker, an indication for the continuing education that we all need to do as people who live here in this area. Um, so I want to thank everybody um, here representing uh, Native American and Indigenous Peoples Heritage Month. Um, and I look forward to using a new resource I learned about from the Northwestern Center um, for 30 Days of Indigenous. I encourage folks to check it out. There's programming information available, a fantastic website. I know we're sharing that in our community. And so just want to th say thank you, Madam President, for bringing the resolution, and thank you to our guests. Thank you, Alderwoman Haddon. The chair recognizes Alderwoman King. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. I, too, stand uh, to be associated with this resolution as uh, somebody with strong Native American ties uh, both sides of my parents, mother and father. Um, although I was raised African American, I understand uh, my Native American history um, and encourage others to uh, do the same to find out because we all stand on, on not only Native American land, uh, but on the heritage and the struggles uh, that the Native American people um, had in this country. And so, I want to be associated with this resolution and thank all of you uh, for being here. Um, and we should continue to find out uh, the real history, um, not the sensationalized one, uh, but the real history of uh, Native, Native Americans in this land. Um, and thank you again, Madam President. Thank you, Alderwoman. Uh, the chair recognizes Alderman Vasquez. We turn on his microphone, please. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I am proud to be associated with this resolution. Um, first, I'd like to acknowledge the fact that we're here on stolen land uh, to give tribute for one month uh, for something that deserves way more time than that. Uh, when we think about we live in a city that's named from Native American and indigenous uh, language, I think it's something we don't acknowledge enough um, but I do feel some comfort in that we're moving in a direction. And I hope that when we think about not just uh, indigenous people this month, but throughout 
all our, all our time. We think about the lessons that we need to learn from them when we think about the environment, when we think about um, how we look at community. And so anything that we need to do as a council, I am glad and proud to be a partner in. Uh, just let us know and we'll continue. So we do have an Indigenous Peoples Day uh, and we celebrate it every day. Thank you very much. The chair recognizes <clears throat> Alderman Rodriguez. Thank you, Madam Chair, Pre Madam President. Um, I too rise to be associated um, with this resolution. Um, first, acknowledging the land that we're now on, the long history of the Native American community, um, generations before us. And I also want to recognize the very strong relationship that my community, the Latino community, has with the Native American community. We are brothers and sisters. We are one, and we are proud to stand with you uh, for justice as we move forward um, in, in love and in unity and in much, much respect. We acknowledge the Native American community on this day, on this month, but as my colleague said, uh, let us remember every day um, that this land is a land that was inhabited by a peoples before the Europeans came, and we recognize their great contributions to our culture. Um, we do not forget. Thank you so much, Madam President. Thank you, Alderman. Uh, the chair recognizes Alderwoman Scott. Good morning. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I, too, share in this uh, resolution, although that there has been advances with uh, indigenous people and ethnic minority groups, um, they, all, they both continue to face exclusion and marginalization and a lack of equal access to basic services. So I, too, stand in support being an African-American woman um, of this resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. The chair recognizes Alderman Sicho Lopez. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I uh, would like to also rise in support of this resolution. Um, and uh, especially during these times, uh, the importance of not only acknowledging, celebrating, and honoring Native American Heritage Month in a time like this, as someone who has roots in the indigenous community, uh, I find extremely relevant and important that we discuss the history, our past, our ancestors, in a time where we need to reckon with our history. I think there is certainly a collision here of cultures and ideologies, but it's certainly, I tell you that, in our community, there's certainly respect for matriarchal societies where we respect the women in our community because they have the secrecy of bringing life to this universe. And today, more than ever, we see the lack of respect, the lack of consideration, and the push to other and dehumanize each other. When our indigenous ancestors have always believed in collective power, they have always believed in the power of the people. And I think that we have to take a moment to look at the past, to understand the present. And the 500 years of colonization are not going to be overcome easily, but they will be overcome by our actions in this council that are very relevant because we also believe in the rights of Mother Earth. And it seems that those rights seem to be forgotten on a regular basis. So when we talk about restoring the Department of the Environment, we got the opportunity to also act with integrity and with actions to honor what the ancestors have said. That's what I'm proud to be associated with this resolution, because I'm proud of my identity. I'm proud of where I come from. And I want to make sure that our kids have the same opportunity 
to be in our schools and to receive the education of their history to the proud of where they are. And in our community, we're no longer accepting this rejection and oftentimes the racism that often tells, tells us to go back to our land. Well, this is our land. We are very much American. The South American and Central American with North American, we're one continent. That is what our ancestors said. And today, more than ever, we got to challenge the white supremacy that is in our schools. We got to challenge the dehumanization of others, peoples, no matter where we come from. That is our ancestors, have they said. They walked this land before us, way before us. But their history and the legacy still remain with us. And I hope that this council, with actions, honor the legacy of the indigenous community, an indigenous community that lead with our history, hopefully, for better days. So let's make this council honor the Native American indigenous societies, because today what we see with concern is that the truth is punished and lies are rewarded. That's the society we have today, and we have an opportunity to change it around as one community. So thank you again. Thank you, Alderman. <clears throat> the chair recognizes Alderman Burke. Um, thank you, Madam President. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the council. I'm pleased to be able to add a word or two to this resolution and observe, Madam President, uh, how coincidental it is that we invite the Native American leaders to this chamber this morning and note the importance of the Native Americans in our history. But the coincidence is that this morning, on the uh, front page of the New York Times, there is a news story entitled, Cherokees Asking U.S. to Honor, 1835 Pledge for House Delegate. And it recounts the fact that in the travel, strike that, in the Treaty of New Escota, which was signed in 1835 in uh, Georgia, part of the promises contained in the treaty, which um, saw the native lands taken from these tribes in the southeast, where they were forced off their lands at gunpoint, thus beginning the death march to Oklahoma, which became known as the Trail of Tears, which actually passed through southern Illinois on their way to Oklahoma. But what the story doesn't recount is that I clearly remember a number of years ago, when the then president of Ireland, Mary McAleese, stopped in Chicago on her way to the Native American nation in Oklahoma, where she paid tribute to the Native Americans, who a little, in a little town in Oklahoma in 18. 47, during the middle of the Irish famine that saw a million Irish people die from starvation and another million emigrate from that small island nation to all around the world, to express the gratitude of the Irish nation to those Native Americans who gathered there on their tribe lands after they had suffered the Trail of Tears and the Death March. And you know why they gathered on that day in 1847? To take up a collection. 
They took up a collection to help with famine relief in a little island that probably none of them ever had really heard about because they wanted to relieve the suffering of those poor souls. And President McLeese, all those many years later, was traveling to express the gratitude of the Irish people. And she stopped here in Chicago and spoke at the Irish Fellowship Club and told that story. And what a remarkable story it is. Obviously, almost 190 years later, the provisions of this treaty, which saw those Native Americans be driven from their lands and begin on the Trail of Tears, still hasn't been fulfilled. Like so many other promises that our nation made to Native Americans, hasn't been fulfilled. So perhaps, uh, perhaps legislative bodies like this can help stir the Congress into action to honor this and so many other promises that have been left unfulfilled after almost two centuries. We have a lot to be grateful for to the Native American peoples. And this small gesture that I suggest could be a catalyst for other gestures might go a long way to help to apologize for the terrible things that have been visited upon the Native Americans over these almost two centuries. The Irish people have not forgotten. And they honor that remarkable act of charity to this very day. One hundred and seventy dollars back in 1847 was worth about $5,000 in today's money. They could have used that $5,000 to uh, relieve their own uh, sufferings, but they chose to take that donation and send it to that little island to help other people that were going through this terrible privation. And I'm proud, too, that the Veterans Caucus um, many months ago, urged all of you to vote to urge the governor of Illinois to grant a posthumous pardon to Ira Hayes. And the commissioner and I talked about this uh, at the time, a great American marine hero who was jailed here in Chicago, probably suffered with PTSD, a disease that was not even diagnosed back at the time. For those of you who might not remember, Ira Hayes was one of the five Marines that raised the flag on Iwo Jima, the most iconic photograph of World War II. A Native American, the first Native American to ever be a Marine in combat. Yes, he, he died in terrible circumstances. And wouldn't that be a nice gesture also during this month when we honor the Native American traditions to grant that posthumous pardon to Ira Hayes, one of the great American heroes of our time who never has been sufficiently remembered or honored. So, Madam President, thank you very much for bringing up this matter this morning and for permitting us to join together and, <clears throat> for nothing else, to say 
we're sorry. We're sorry what is, for what has gone on. And perhaps uh, resolutions like this might go a long way to help remedy what has been a shortcoming for all too many years in our great nation. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Alderman Burke. The chair recognizes Alderwoman Lee. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam President. And I, too, rise in support of this resolution. I'll keep my remarks brief. Um, thank you so much for being here today. Um, as the only uh, Asian American member of the city council, um, I feel really important for me to always rise in support of resolutions like these and acknowledge these heritage months, um, which, to be clear, are not enough to make up for or um, make right anything that has been done wrong over the history of our country. Um, I believe that um, that is our biggest challenge is reconciling our history, all the good and the bad, um, for all people. What I love about the Heritage Month, though, is that it provides um, a specific and intentional opportunity uh, to have conversations here at the council, at home, in classrooms, um, and talk about shared history and to learn about the land that we're sitting on now that we call home. So thank you for all that you do <clears throat> to continue to um, carry on your traditions. I, was, I learned today that there are 150 different tribes represented here in Chicago. That was pretty mind-blowing to me. So I'm excited to learn more about that myself um, and hope to, over time, um, get to interact with you as well and bring our two communities together as well. So thank you very much for all that you do. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. The chair recognizes Alderman Burnett. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. Uh, I also rise in support of this resolution. Um, thank you all very much for your contributions to this country. Uh, you all have um, primed this nation to, to let folks know that it's habitable. Uh, a lot of folks wouldn't have come to this country if they didn't know that Native Americans and human beings were able to live in this country. It's unfortunate of the, um, the tragics that had went on when folks tried to occupy and take over things. You know, I was telling you guys earlier in uh, the room, uh, a lot of us African Americans have family members who always tell us, we part Indian, right? And, but I, I just want you to know when our family members do say that, whether it's true or not, right, they say it with pride. They say it with pride. You know, I always think I can run fast because I'm, you know, part Indian, right? They used to call my nickname Lightfoot, right? Because uh, cause, uh, I can run real fast. But uh, from, <laughs> from racing, I used to race. But, but we really, you know, and, and, and thinking about uh, a lot of African Americans think that we are um, part Indian because during the struggle, during our struggle, you all were there. When we were discriminated against, you were discriminated against. When folks were taking advantage of you guys, they were taking advantage of African Americans uh, for free labor and, you know, and, and all of those other different things. So we honor your culture. Uh, we appreciate the fact that you guys still stand up and make sure that you're recognized and make sure that this nation does not forget that you guys were here first. And we appreciate, again, for you all being the first ones here and priming this nation for everyone to know that they can live here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alderman Burnett. The chair recognizes Alderwoman uh, Rodriguez Sanchez. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam President. Um, I also rise in support of this resolution. I, it's, it's hard to talk sometimes in moments like this because it feels like the debt is too great and the pain is too deep. And the legacy of colonization and white supremacy has definitely done a number. Um, I do want to say that there are words that we can use as well, like beauty and resilience. 
and we can use the word fight, and we can use the word struggle, which are the only things that have allowed oppressed communities to be able to gain access to the resources that they rightfully deserve, that belong to them. Um, so I do want to reassert my commitment to continue to fight for that access, to continue to fight so that we can have an Indigenous Peoples Day in the city of Chicago that replaces Columbus Day, and that we can get rid of all of those white supremacist monuments that we haven't been able to get rid of, and that we can make sure that the indigenous community in Chicago have access to absolutely every resource that they need and that belong to them. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Alderwoman. The chair recognizes Alderman Wagesbeck. Thank you, Madam Chair. I rise in support of this <coughs> resolution today as well to observe National Native American Heritage Month. And I just want to say thank you to Mr. White uh, for his efforts as he goes out and teaches children about the culture, the heritage, and I hope that others can learn from it as well. I think you mentioned a school that might be outside of the city, but um, bringing that to our children in CPS, um, our children learning about the cultural uh, and heritage events like powwows in the city that uh, happen every year, um, those are the kind of things that I think we need to continue uh, to make an effort um, to teach them so that they can learn and support the heritage that you've built upon, uh, the history that you've built upon. And I uh, will do what I can, and I think this council will do what we can to make sure that your efforts, those in the box, and, and many others outside of here today can uh, make sure we continue that, that effort throughout our city. Thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> Thank you, Alderman. The chair recognizes Alderman Cardona. Pardon me, sorry. Th uh, th thank you, Madam President. Um, yes, yeah, pretty close to Cardona, too. But it's Cardenas. Thank you. Um, I, um, obviously, I want to uh, give you um, the eminence that you reserve uh, by sticking uh, to your roots and, and asking um, you know, this body <coughs> and many others to honor, uh, to honor you, honor your past. Um, and you know, I want to thank you, uh, Madam President, for your efforts in uniting and funding the New American uh, initiatives that you have uh, um, funded since the beginning, since day one. But you continue to do that and to expand. Uh, this resolution speaks volumes to that. There's lots to be done uh, on uniting families. And I'm talking about Indian American families. Uh, some of those tribes that live here uh, are some of the also related to some of the tribes in the, in the Northwest Territories uh, way back from 1848. In 1853, and some of the treaties that Alderman, my colleague, uh, mentioned uh, in that gets and purchase where uh, California and Arizona and, and Oklahoma went uh, to the United States. There's tens of thousands of people that literally um, um, have no access to unite their families uh, that are in Mexico and, and, and Canada. Uh, this resolution speaks to the fact that we need to do more. Uh, this is a good intention. And your office, I know, is going to then follow the next steps. And so how do we help these people um, you know, uh, find their identity, but also make it easier for them to travel across and see their families uh, on special holidays? Right now, uh, they can't, because uh, we now have a real ID. We have more barriers uh, on them right now uh, because we, we tend to uh, you know, use immigration as a stop all. And I think the, the fact that you are um, working on this and, and showing us a way that perhaps we can add more, uh, more voices to, to the endeavor and do more about it. Uh, I'm definitely signing on to the fact that, you know, if we can unite families and those families can come to us and say, how do we make it easier for you to reunite with your family some, somewhere or another, I'm game. So thank you again. Thank you, Alderman. Any other members of the body wish to speak to this resolution? <clears throat> <clears throat> I stand with the entire body of this council to speak to this resolution, which is personally very important to me. We must acknowledge that from the earliest days when the white settlers came to this country, the history of American Indians has been filled with tragedy, violence, broken promises, and an ocean of tears. But we dare not forget that throughout this history to this day, 
Native American residents of our city have made a deeply positive impact on all of who we are. In fact, we wouldn't be the great city that we are today had it not been for, for Kitty Hawa of the Potomotomy tribe and her husband, John Baptiste Point du Sable, helping to foster the community that would become the city of Chicago. It's also important to note that as of the recent census, 280,985 Illinois residents identified as American Indian or Alaska Native. And because of this, and because of the tremendous contributions of the Native American communities, we found it essential to acknowledge that our city is, in fact, located on the traditional homelands of the Council of the Three Fires, the Ojibwe, the Odawa, and the Potawatomi, as well as other nations. In fact, Chicago is home to the third largest Native American urban population in the country and the largest Native American population in the Midwest, representing over 150 tribal nations. We are also home to the American Indian Center, the nation's oldest urban Native American community and social services center, as well as numerous professional, educational, cultural, and other organizations. This diverse range of cultures, traditions, and histories is the essence of who we are as a city. And we remain deeply committed to promoting Native culture, um, her cultural heritage to inform and educate visitors and residents alike. To demonstrate that commitment, in 2021, this council will remember um, the adoption of a formal land acknowledgement resolution that will forever connect Chicago to its Native roots. Chicago's home, of course, to many outspoken Native uh, and talented Native leaders. And that includes the late Susan Power, who was a true community pillar and helped found what is now the American Indian Center, ensured that the history and heritage of Native Americans was never forgotten, and fought tirelessly to open up doors of opportunity for our Native American communities here in our city. Ms. Powers passed away earlier this week, and on behalf of the city, I offer my sincere condolences to her family, friends, and all who were connect connected and touched by her work. As long as our city stands, her legacy will live on. Part of the reason why these recognitions are essential is because we need our children, and particularly Native children, to see each other in the city's history. And importantly, to see themselves as part of the present and the future. The recognition in public words hopefully provides not only a sense of pride, but also a sense of power. So as we celebrate Native American Heritage Month, let us recognize and thank our Native communities for all they have done to keep the traditions alive and visible and to make sure that we understand what we have done, what we must do, and how we move forward together. Thank you very much. May we rise in support of this resolution. <clears throat>
chair recognizes Alderwoman uh, Silverstein. I, I'm sorry that I did not uh, stand up sooner, but I think at first I was just in total disbelief, and then I needed a few minutes to calm myself down. But um, I would like to condemn the comments that were made by one of our public speakers earlier today. Kanye is not correct. I, correct. I am a Jew. I represent a very large Jewish community. Anti-Semitism is on the rise, and I am personally insulted, and I ask that those comments are stricken from the record. Hearing no objection, so ordered. And we must remember, um, Clerk, uh, we have to cut off these speakers, and I'm thinking, frankly, we should have some kind of statement at the beginning of public speaking to make sure that we're affirming our values and that we not allow people to stand up. She was very close, um, but I think we have to make sure that in this sanctum that we are upholding our values as, as a city council and as an administration. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Silverstein, for those remarks, and her remarks will be stricken from the record. So ordered. <clears throat> Alderman Mitchell. Uh, Madam President, I move passage of this resolution in the omnibus. Hearing no objection, so ordered. I now move we return to the regular order of business. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, is communications. I, City Clerk Anna Valencia, hereby inform the City Council that the following documents were filed in my office relating to the respective subjects designated as follows. Executive Order Number 2020-22-4 regarding Community Media Advisory, Advertising Office Inspector General's Report regarding Chicago Police Department's Peer and Supervisory Wellness Support Strategies, and a report on the Department of Transportation regarding Non-Ordinance Loading Zone Activity and Resignation of George A. Cardenas and as Alderman of the 12th Ward. I, City Clerk Valencia, also informed the City Council that those matters which were considered by the City Council at the regular meeting held on October 26, 2022, to required by statute to be published in book or pamphlet form or one more newspapers were published in pamphlet form on November 4th by being printed in full text and printed pamphlet copies of the Journal of Proceedings of the City Council in the City of Chicago. I, City Clerk Valencia, also informed the, the City Council that ordinances authorizing the imposition of a tax levy approval of the year 2022 budget and the execution of a service provider agreements for special service area numbers 2, 23, 29, 2014, 35-2015, 2015, which were passed by the City Council on October 26, 2022, to request to be published in the special pamphlet, were published in a special pamphlet form on November 3, 2022. Also want to correct that the city council that ordinance is authorizing the imposition of a tax levy approval of the year 2023. Your honor, that concludes reports and communications. Thank you. Next up, committee reports. <coughs> the chair recognizes um, Alderman uh, Wagesback, Finance Committee. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, so the, the committee report for finance, um, Hold on one second, Madam Chairman. All right. Madam President, Chairman Dalla, I move to re defer and publish the following budget related reports. Item number one is an ordinance authorizing the levy of real estate taxes for 2023. Item number two is a substitute revenue ordinance amending various provisions of the municipal code and the administrative debt relief ordinance of 2023. And item number three, an ordinance regarding the issuance of general obligation bonds for new money purposes, second lien water revenue WIFIA project bonds, series 2022, an increase in borrowing authorization of O'Hare commercial paper and O'Hare line of credit programs, establishment of Midway line of credit program and amendment of various bond ordinances. And this concludes my report. These all would be uh, asked to be redeferred. All those items will be deferred and published. Next up, the Committee on Budget and Government Operations, Chairman Dow. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, Chairman Wagsback and I move to defer and publish the following budget related reports. Item number seven, which is an ordinance amending various provisions of the Municipal Code regarding technical and Scrivener's corrections. Items number eight and nine, a series of proposed corrections and revisions 
to the 2023 Annual Appropriation Ordinance and the 2023 Annual Appropriation Ordinance. Item number 10, a substitute management ordinance as amended, amending various provisions of the municipal code regarding organizations and functions of city government. Item number 11, an ordinance concerning expenditure of motor fuel tax funds for 2023. And item number 12, an ordinance approving an intergovernmental agreement with the Chicago Transit Authority and Cook County for allocation of motor fuel tax funds. Published. Um, to continue with my report, item number one, a communication concerning the appointment of Sandra Blakemore as commissioner of the Department of Assets, Information and Services. Madam President, I move passage of this item by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Oh. Are there any uh, members of the body that wish to speak to uh, this particular resolution? Uh, the chair recognizes Alderman Irvin. Thank you, Madam President. Just wanted to, uh, was not present at your hearing, but uh, for your uh, confirmation, but I do want to congratulate you on your appointment and uh, wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Any other members that wish to speak to this item? I believe there's a request for a roll call. The voting is now open. Please hit refresh and submit your vote. The voting is now open. If you have any issues, please raise your hand. Just two left. All right, I will just take the two last voice votes. Um, Alderman Ramirez Rosa? Aye. Aye. Alderman Vasquez? Aye. Aye. All right, we will record your votes. Thank you. The voting is now closed. <clears throat> there are, <clears throat> with the two voice votes, there are 47 yeas and no nays. The matter is passed. Um, Alderman Kappelman on the motion for reconsideration. Madam President, I move to reconsider the vote. All those in favor of the motion for reconsideration signify by saying aye. All those opposed say nay. nay. The nays have it. Congratulations, Sandra. <clears throat> So I will, I will add, if I can, um, Sandra is quiet, but mighty. And she's been doing a terrific job uh, leading the department. And obviously, any of you who have any issues, you should reach out to her directly. She is truly um, a dedicated public servant, and I'm honored that she's now part, officially a part of the cabinet. Congratulations. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Chairwoman Dow. Yes, thank you, Madam President. Item number two is an ordinance introduced by Alderman Michelle Harris of the 8th Ward concerning the transfer of funds within the Committee on Committees and Rules for the year 2022. I move passage of, by the same roll call vote previously applied to item number one on the Budget Committee report and the associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Item number three is in substitute ordinance introduced by Alderman Gil Villegas of the 36th Ward concerning the transfer of funds within the Committee on Economic Capital and Technology Development for the year 2022 
I move passage by the same roll call vote previously applied to item number one on the budget committee report and the associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Item number four is the substitute ordinance introduced by Alderman Gil Viegas, 36th Ward, concerning the transfer of funds within the Committee on Economic Capital and Technology Development for the year 2022. I move passage by the same roll call vote previously applied to item number one on the Budget Committee report and the associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Item number five is a resolution introduced by Alderman Pat Dowell of the Third Ward calling for the Illinois General Assembly to include provisions in future election-related legislation to make central vote centers permanent. I move passage by the same roll call vote previously applied to item number one on the Budget Committee report and the associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so order. Item number six is a substitute ordinance concerning an amendment to the annual appropriation ordinance year 2022 within fund number 925 for the Office of Budget and Management, the Department of Housing, the Department of Public Health, the Mayor's Office for People with Disabilities, and the Department of Family and Support Services. I move passage by the same roll call vote previously applied to item number one on the Budget Committee report and the associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. This concludes my report, Madam President. Thank you, Chairman Dow. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, the agreed calendar, uh, Chairman Harris. Thank you, Madam President. I've received from clerk, the city clerk, Anna M. Valencia, a total of 16 items proposed of the, for the agreed calendar, consisting of congratulatory, commemorative, tributary resolutions for the following aldermen, Harris, O'Shea, and Tunney. I move passage of the agreed calendar in the omnibus. All right, hearing no objection, so ordered. Um, next up, new business, Mr. Clerk. Uh, please call the wards, beginning with the first. Claims, free permits, license fee exemptions, which are referred to the Committee on Finance. Zoning amendments, which are referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Traffic regulations, traffic control signals, and traffic signs, which are referred to the Committee on Pedestrian and Traffic Safety. Grants for privilege on and over the public way, which are referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. An exemption from physical barrier requirements for commercial driveway <coughs> alley access for parking facilities, which is referred to the Committee <coughs> on Transportation and Public Way. Alman Mitchell and others have a proposed resolution to call for hearings on district-based municipal refuse collection, which is referred to the Committee on the Budget and Government Operations. Alman Tabaris has a proposed ordinance for an honorary street designation as Honorary Richard Techman Way, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Alman Burnett has a proposed order for the issuance of permits for signed signboards at 1574 North Kingsbury, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Alman Rodriguez Sanchez has a proposed ordinance for an honorary street designation as John E. Byrne Way, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Alman Tunney has proposed orders for the issuance of permits for signed signboards, which are referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. And Alderman Silverstein has a proposed order for the issuance of permits for signed signboards at 2536 West Devon Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Your Honor, that concludes the presentation of aldermatic introductions. Next up is approval of the journal. Alderman Mitchell. Madam President, I'm not aware of any corrections to the journal from the October 26, 2022 regular meeting and move that it be approved. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Unfinished business, Alderman Mitchell. Madam President, I'm not aware of any, un I'm not aware of any unfinished business. Um, miscellaneous business, Alderman Mitchell. I'm not aware of any miscellaneous business. And folks, as a reminder, pursuant to the ordinance passed, at the October 26th meeting, the next City Council meeting um, is this coming Monday, November 7th, at the regular time. Uh, the Chair recognizes uh, Alderman Irvin. Madam President, I move no, I'm sorry, Madam Alderman Mitchell. The mm -hmm. Chair recognizes Alderman Irvin. One Your moment. ears now, not this time. Uh, I, you know what, uh, I just wanted to thank uh, the members of the Council that reached out uh, to me uh, during the incident that occurred East Garfield Park in the 28th Ward. Um, it's something that I wish none of us ever have to go through. Uh, the massive number of people that were shot, the fact that these were mostly uh, women and children and seniors, uh, something that uh, we cannot not only not tolerate, but uh, continue a lot of fester in our communities. But I, I appreciate every call, every text, and every email that I received from members of the council, and those who came out and, and joined us uh, on a Wednesday evening. So 
I just wanted to say thank you to, to you all who, who did something. I just wanted to know the residents on the west side appreciate that. Again, I just wanted to personally thank each and every one of you. Thank you. And, and also, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor, for joining uh, with us and Superintendent Brown out there on, we, on Wednesday as well. So thank each and every one of you. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Mitchell, uh, the omnibus. Madam President, I move that matters in the omnibus be passed by the first most favorable roll call vote by the Committee on Budget and Government Operations and the associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Alderman Mitchell. There being motion no further reconsider. business before the body, I move that we adjourn. Hearing no objection, so ordered. We are adjourned till Monday. Thank you all.